have been working in DevOps field for last 10 years, especially in the DevOps and cloud field for last 10 years, working at different companies and in different countries through different cultures. So I've worked with many smart DevOps people and I also have interviewed a lot of DevOps people and managed team of DevOps engineers and cloud engineers. So I came across a very good DevOps engineer, but also I came across an outstanding DevOps engineer. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you five important qualities or traits that I found in an outstanding DevOps engineer or in general, this might even apply for people who are working in different streams of IT. But since I was more into this field, I'm going to give you five traits that differentiates or that sets them apart from the usual DevOps crowd. And I'm also going to give you tips how you can improve on these traits if you do not have them already. And do watch this video till the end because the last important one is the most important one trait that you should inculcate as part of your IT career to go beyond engineering level or to go, to go even into a leadership level. The fifth trait that I've seen in a successful and outstanding DevOps engineer is that growth mindset and continuous learning. So as a DevOps engineer, when you go and work in a company, you might be in a very good position of like working in only on one cloud or you know, working on certain tool set. But I've seen these people, they not only work on those tools, but they're always eager to learn the new tools or like for instance, they want to learn about GCP or Azure if they're working on AWS and see where they stand in the market. So they always have this growth mindset. This growth mindset could be related to the money or it could be also related to the technology and tools that they want to improve on. So they always do that market correction and see where they stand in the market and, and try to improve their skills. So five is continuous learning and four is effective team collaboration and teamwork. Now, if you are a developer like Java developer or, uh, you know, sometimes you can just put on your headset and start writing the code. You can sit in a corner office and do something. But with DevOps, you continuously work with people, teams, different teams across business units or across developers or operations people or QA people in the same team. So the teamwork is inherently part of your job. But what I've seen in these people is that they are not insecure people, meaning whatever they have learned, they would always be the first one to share whether it's a, a new thing that they've implemented, they were ready to document and then share it with a lot of people across the team, across business unit and show what they have done because they were never insecure people. As you have seen in the fifth trait, it, it combines that because they are always upskilling and learning. So they never had that insecure feeling that if I share something, maybe somebody else will learn and, you know, take your job or something like that. So collaboration and teamwork is fourth quality that any successful DevOps engineer will have. So the third quality is problem solving skills. Again, this is part of the job. You will have a lot of issues when you implement something or do POCs. Uh, you will find issues in the systems and then you will fix it. So what I found in this smart DevOps people whom I worked with are, they are out of the box thinkers and they think from multi-dimensional aspect. Like for example, if you are given a task of implementing something, let's say, you know, you are asked to remediate something in AWS, remediate meaning terminate a resource whenever something happens in cloud. So if you give this challenge to a normal DevOps engineer, they can easily write it in Ansible playbook or you'll have hundred ways of doing these things. But a smart DevOps engineer would think like, what is the benefit for the business? Like meaning if I do this through an Ansible playbook from on-premise or Ansible playbook inside an EC2 versus if I do this through a cloud function or Lambda function, what are the benefits and pros and cons of each? So they are sort of a deep thinkers and critical thinkers. You know, they question themselves about whether they are doing the right thing. And then they come up with a solution that is more benefiting the company, not just, you know, just randomly go and implement something. And connecting to the same thing, the smart DevOps engineers whom I worked with, they are very good or decent coders. For instance, if they cannot find a solution within the tools or within whatever tools that are there in the market, they will just go and implement something in Python or Golang. So they are smart coders. And so that's why I keep emphasizing that 
coding is also part of your automation not just learning tools but if you upskill yourself in golang or python then it will definitely help you to become a very successful devops engineer so the number two quality is adaptability and flexibility look sometimes when you join as a devops engineer you might have a different expectation but the reality when you join a company is going to be totally different because you might not have access and you might have to do only certain things you have learned sort of an IT syllabus when you're preparing for DevOps, but you are only going to work on, let's say, maybe Ansible or Terraform, only certain part of the thing as part of your learning. But they are smart enough and they are adaptive to that uh, thing in the company and they will see what are the scope of improvement then and in that work itself. And the second part of this is they understand the business very well when they are trying to implement something. Okay, like for instance, the business, the SLS of the business when they're implementing and then how can they make it better in the terms of automation and how can they adapt to, how can they adapt their, uh, you know, DevOps practices to the business. And also they are never shy of experimenting and failing because they believe in the philosophy of fail fast, meaning they will implement something in a POC environment and then they will try to find a solution or practice some new tools and propose them. And if it doesn't work, they're okay and they let it go. And the most important thing as part of this uh, second quality that I found in them is they're ready to work in the, in the critical shift hours if required. You know, sometimes DevOps engineers have to work in the production issues or as part of the SRE roles, they have to fix the critical issues in the production or do a post-mortem during that, you know, hours of uh, deployment or if something goes wrong. And they are flexible enough to work in those shifts. And that's another important trait that I found in a, in, a, in a smart DevOps engineer. So the final most important trait that I have seen in all the successful DevOps engineers or heroes or amazing guys is they have very good communication. They are very effective in their communication. They are crystal clear in the communication. So this, like I've said in my many videos, you know, you must have read through a lot of roadmaps in a lot of YouTube channels, you know, study that, study this, Terraform, all those things are there. But if you're not very good with communication, then down the lane, one, you might not even get a proper job. Or even if you get a job, then you might not go up the ladder in the company if you do not have this proper communication. So now what I mean by communication is that, see, as a DevOps engineer, you try to implement a lot of things. You know, let's say you are trying to uh, go to a developer and say like going forward the build is going to break if you do not have a proper unit testing you know communication both to the upper management and as well as to the developers is crucial here and the way you communicate and the way you explain to them makes a hell lot of difference uh, in the role and second important trait as part of the communication is that these people are active listeners they listen carefully to what developers say they listen carefully to what managers say and then they speak so you should be a very good active listener and this is what even Satya Nadella used to be uh, or even this is what even Satya Nadella said in many of his meetings that you speak only when it is required to speak and when you speak it should make a lot of sense to people who are listening to you. And then third part of effective communication is you should have empathy towards whatever you're trying to do because like I've said Dev DevOps sometimes can be disruptive to the current ecosystem wherever you're working and you should show a lot of empathy. Now the final part, how can you improve on some of these things? Like some of the stuff that I've discussed at the start will be part of the job and you will learn as in when you're gaining experience and you're gaining wisdom, you will be a very good listener and then uh, you know you will try to build solutions. So that is part of the job. But with respect to effective communication, I have done two things that worked for me and I'm sure it might work for you as well. So number one is read a lot of books. So before you go to bed, at least read four to five pages, switch off your phone or put that put phone in silent and read before you sleep. That is number one. Number two, this is a little bit controversial. I don't know if it works for you, but it worked for me, especially in, in my starting of my career in 2008s and 9s, was that I used to watch a lot of movies, especially the drama movies, not the action movies, because in the action movies, you'll not have a lot of dialogues. So the drama movies of... English, so drama English movies, watch them, but watch them with subtitles. That way you can build effective communication and you can understand how two people, how two people converse and you can understand some important words out of those. That, that will help a lot and that, that will also 
that will also help you for the cultural transformation if you are going into any other country. All right, so these are the five traits that I found in a successful DevOps engineers or DevOps heroes. And I'm 100% sure that you can also inculcate all these important traits. The only thing that you should figure out is where you're lacking in this trait and see how you can work on those. Thank you all again for watching this video and I'm going to come up with a new video soon on 2024 roadmap, which is not going to be a lot of different from previous roadmaps, but I'll tell you what you have to especially stress on in the year 24 and what you should leave aside. Thank you all again for watching this video. Take care.